hello coders i hope you are coding well in today's video we will build full stack CRUD application and for the front end we will use react js we will use spring boot in our backend and for the database we will use mysql so without wasting any time let's get started with the overview video so we can start from our db and as you can see here we have a db employee underscore db and in this db we have employee table and we have some random data already inserted and we will use mysql workbench to interact with our db and for the backend we will use spring boot and we will use intellij to write the code of java and here you can see the basic structure of our spring boot application where we have controller entity repository and service packages and for the front end we will use react and we will write the code in the vs code and you can see here the basic structure of our react application now let's go to the browser and i will show you the working of the project and as you can see we are on post new employee page where we have inputs for the employee details and we can fill this information employee name employee email employee phone number and employee department and then we will click on this post employee button to add a new employee in our db so let's say for the name i will put it as test and for the email i will put test at the rate gmail.com and then i will put some random phone number and for the department i will add hr now let's click on this post employee button and you can see we got redirected to our main page where we can see already existing employees and on the end we can see the newly added employee and after that we have two buttons the first button is for update we can click on this update button and it will redirect us to the update page where we can see the details of employee already patched in the inputs now let's update the name of the employee and i will add the update string now let's click on this update employee button and you can see we got redirected back to our main page and we can see the name got updated and after this we have another button to delete the employee and we can click on this button to remove the employee from the db and you can see after the click that employee got removed and we can see the updated record and as you can see i am on the website of spring boot and on the scroll we can get a link for quick start guide so let's click on this and on this page as you can see they gave a link to create a new web project so let's click on this link which is start.spring.io and here we need to put the details of our project and for the build tool we will select it as maven and for the language we will use the same java and for the spring boot version we will keep 3.2.1 because this is the latest stable version and for the group we will put it as code with projects and after this for the name we will set it as employee dash server and for the packaging we will keep the jar as selected and for the java version we will use java 17 and with this our project metadata is done now we need to click on this button to add the required dependencies and the first dependency we want is the spring web because we want to build rest apis and we can get apache tomcat as default embedded container so let's click on this and after this we will add spring jpa for our repository layer and after this we want to connect our project with mysql db so for that we need the dependency of mysql driver and after this the last dependency we want is the lambwork to reduce the boilerplate code and i forgot to update the artifact so let's copy the employee and let's paste it here and after this we can click on this generate button to generate the project and as you can see our project got downloaded now let's open the location and as you can see i pasted the zip file in one folder now let's right click on this zip file and let's extract the files here and now we need to open this extracted folder in the IntelliJ and as you can see I imported the project in the IntelliJ now let's wait for the sync to complete and as you can see our project sync is done and you can see the basic structure of Spring Boot application now let's open our POM file and you can see all the dependencies here which we just added now let's open our source file and in the source file we can open our main file and in the Java package we have our main class employee application now we can open our resources package and you can see one application dot properties file and in this file we will write the configurations like database configurations before creating the new react application if you don't have the node.js you need to install the node.js and for that you can visit node.js.org and you can download your installer for your operating system 
and after downloading and installing the node.js you can open one folder to create the react project and i will use the same folder in which we have our spring boot application so we will right click here and we will open our cmd and here we will give the command to create the new react app which is npx create react app and after this we need to give the name which is employ web in our case now let's hit enter and as you can see it started creating the react app and now it is installing the packages which can take some time and as you can see our react project got created successfully now let's close this terminal and you should see a new folder with the name of your project now let's right click on this folder and let's open it in vs code and you can see our basic react folder structure which contains the source folder which is the main folder we will use throughout this series and now we need to run this application so let's click on this terminal and create new terminal and to run this application we need to give a command which is npm start and as you can see our application is up now let's go to the browser and you can see the starting page of our react application so first of all we need to create the new schema so we will open mysql workbench and to create a new schema we can click on this icon and here in this input we need to type the name of the schema which is employ in our case and then we will click on this apply button and we need to verify the sql query and then we can click on this apply and it says sql script was successfully applied to the database now let's click on this finish button and as you can see we got new employee schema and currently we don't have any tables in it now let's go back to our intellij and here we need to open our application dot properties file and here we will write the configuration and first of all we need to write the url of our database and to do that we will write spring dot data source dot url is equals to and here we need to mention jdbc colon mysql and after this we need to mention the environment and then the port and in our case the environment is localhost and the port is 3306 and after slash we need to mention the name of the schema which is employee in our case and after the url we need to mention the username so we will write spring dot data source dot username is equals to and in my case the username is root so i will write root and after the username we need to mention the password so we will write spring dot data source dot password is equals to and in my case the password is root as well and if you have a different password then you need to mention your own password here and after the password we need to mention driver class name so we will write spring dot data source dot driver class name is equals to and we will mention com dot mysql dot cj dot jdbc dot driver and with this our data source properties are completed now we need to mention jpa properties so we will write spring dot jpa dot hibernate dot ddl auto is equals to and we will set this to update and this line configures the behavior of hibernate and setting it to update means that hibernate will attempt to update the database schema based on the entity classes and after this we will mention spring dot jpa dot show sql is equals to true and this line enables the logging of sql statements executed by hibernate when set to true it will print sql statements to the console and with this our mysql db configuration is completed now let's click on this button to run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors so first of all we need to create the employee entity and to do that we need to create a package first so we will right click here and we will choose new package and we will name this package as entity now we can right click on this entity package and we will choose new java class and we will name this class as employee and after this we need to annotate this class with at the rate entity annotation and we are using this entity annotation because we want to tell the spring boot that this is a gpa entity 
and after this to get the boilerplate code like getters and setters we need to annotate this class with at the rate data annotation from lombok and after this we need to mention the properties and the first property we want is the id so we will write private and the data type of this will be long and we can name this as id and to make this a primary key we need to annotate this with at the rate id annotation and after this we want this id to be auto incremented and to do that we need to give at the rate generated value annotation and for the strategy we will set it as generation type dot identity so whenever we will create an employee it will automatically increment one in the id and after this we need to store the name of the employee so we will write private and the data type of this will be string and we can name this as name and after this we need to store the email so we will duplicate the existing name property and we need to rename it to email and after this we need to store the phone number and for this we will write private string and we will name this as phone and after this we need to store the department of the employee so we will write private string department and with this our employee entity is completed and after this we need to create the repository so we will right click on this employee package and we will create a new package and we will name this as repository and now we will right click on this repository package and we will create a new java class and we will name this class as employee repository and from the options we will select interface and after this we need to annotate this class with at the rate repository annotation and after this we need to extend this class from jpa repository and here we need to mention our entity which is employee in our case and after the entity we need to give the data type of our primary key which is long in our case and with this our employee repository is completed now we need to create the service and first of all we need to create the package so we will right click on this employee package and we will create a new package here and we will name this as service now we will right click on this service package and we will create a new java class and we will name this as employee service and after this we need to annotate this class with at the rate service annotation now let's run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors and we can see one sql log as well that the employee table got created in the database in our spring boot application we need to open our employee service and first of all we will create the method here and we need to annotate this class with at the rate required orgs constructor because we want to inject the employee repository and after this we will write private final and we will inject our employee repository and we can name this as employee repository and after this we can start writing our method and this method will return one employee and we can name this method as post employee and in the params of this method we will accept employee and in the body of this method we will write a return statement and we will call our employee repository and because this is a jpa repository so we have some methods like save so we can call this save method to create a new employee and in the params we need to pass the entity which is employee in our case and with this our post employee method is completed now we need to create an endpoint to call this method and to do that first of all we will create a new package so we will right click here and we will choose new package and we will name this package as controller now we can right click on this controller package and we will create a new java class and we will name this class as employee controller and after creating this employee controller we need to annotate this with at the rate rest controller annotation and after the rest controller annotation we need to give the annotation for a request mapping and for the url we will set it as slash api and after this we need to inject employee service in this controller and to do that we will give the annotation of required orgs constructor and it is from lombok and now we can inject our service so we will write private final and we will mention employee service and we can name this as employee service and after this we will start writing the endpoint and this endpoint will return employee and we can name this as post employee and after this to get the request body we need to mention at the rate request body annotation and we will mention employee and in the body we will write a return statement and we will call our employee service dot post employee method and in the params we will pass employee and at the end we need to annotate this method with post mapping annotation and for the path we need to set it as slash employee and with this our post employee api call is completed now let's run our application 
and as you can see here our application is up on port 8080 without any errors now let's go to the postman and let's test our post employee api and here in the postman we need to choose the request type as post and then we need to write the url which is http localhost colon 8080 and then the api path is api slash employee and after this in the body we need to choose raw and then from this drop down we need to choose json and here we need to write the data for the employee and for the name of the employee i will pass employee one and for the email i will pass employee one at the rate gmail.com and for the phone number i am passing some random digits and for the department i am passing hr now let's click on this send button to call the api and as you can see we got 200 ok and we can see the employee got created now let's open our workbench and let's verify the entry and in the workbench we need to open this tables drop down and you can see the employee table now we need to click on this icon to view the data of this table and you can see we have a one employee got created with the same details to install react bootstrap you need to visit reactbootstrap.netfly.app and here we can click on this get started button and here on the introduction page we can get the command to install the bootstrap so we can click on this copy button and let's go to our react application and in our react application we can click on this terminal and we can create a new terminal and here we need to paste the command and we need to hit enter and as you can see react bootstrap got installed successfully and it updated our package.json file as well and here you can verify the versions as well where bootstrap version is 5.3 and react bootstrap version is 2.9 now let's go back to our react bootstrap website and here we need to scroll down a little bit and we will get one import statement which we need to add in index.js so let's copy this import statement and let's go back to our vs code and here we need to open our index.js file and we need to paste the import statement here and after this let's save this file and after this we need to verify if our bootstrap is working and to do that we can open our app.js file and here we need to remove the existing code and here we will write one h1 tag and we will mention hello world and we will give it a class of text center which is a bootstrap class to align the text in the center of the page now let's save this file and let's run our application and as you can see we got our text hello world which is aligned in the center so to install the routing we will use react router dom and you can visit npmjs slash packages slash react router dom and we can copy this command and we can open our vs code and here we will click on this terminal button and we will create a new terminal and we can paste the copied command and we can hit enter and as you can see our react router dom installed successfully and to make it work we need to open our index.js file and we need to wrap our app tag inside browser router tag and let's copy this from here and let's paste inside the browser router and after this we need to write the import statement so we will write import browser router from react router dom now let's save this file and after this we need to create the header component and to do that we will right click on our src folder and here we will create a new folder first and we will name this folder as pages now we will right click on this pages folder and we will create a new folder and we will name this folder as header and now we need to right click on this header folder and we will create a new file and we will name this file as header.js and after this we will right click again on our header folder and we will create a new file and we will name this file as header.css because we will write the css code in this file and after this let's open our header.js and here we will create one function and we will name it as header as our class name and then we need to write arrow function and here we need to write a return statement and after this we will write export statement at the end and we will mention default and we will export our header and after this we need to create the navigation bar and to do that we will use navbar component of our bootstrap and to use this navbar component we need to write the import statement and we will import navbar from react bootstrap slash navbar and in this navbar we will write a tag for container and after this we need to import this container as well so we will write import statement and we will import container from react bootstrap slash container 
and in this container we need to show the brand as our project name so we will use navbar.brand and we will show employee management system and for the url we will pass slash and after this navbar brand we need to write the tag for nav and we need to write the import statement so we will write import nav from react bootstrap slash nav and after this we will give it a class name ml dash auto to align it to the right side and in this nav tag now we need to mention the nav links and for the first nav link we will show the label as employees and for the url we will set it as slash and now we need to import this link from router so we will write import statement and we will import link from react router dom and after employees link we need to create another link to post the employees so we will copy this tag and we will paste it here and for the label we will pass it as post employee and for the url we will set it as slash employee we don't have this employee route for now but we will create in the future videos and after this we will open our header.css and i will paste the code of the css and you can pause the video and you can copy the css code now let's save this file and now let's go back to our header.js file because we need to import this css file and here we will mention import and we will give the path as dot slash and after this we need to give the file which is header.css and after this we will save this file and now we need to mention this header component in our app.js so we will open our app.js and here we will remove this h1 tag and we will replace it with empty tag and after this we need to remove this import of logo and here we need to mention our header component and we need to write the import as well so we will mention import header from and we will give the path of header component which is slash pages slash header slash header now let's save this app.js file and let's run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors now let's go to the browser and you can see the navigation bar where we have a brand as employee management system and we have two links on the right side for the employees and post employee component so first of all we need to create the dashboard component so we will right click on our pages folder and here we will click on new folder and we will name the new folder as dashboard and after this let's move this dashboard component inside pages and let's click on move and you can see now we got the proper directory structure after this let's right click on our dashboard folder and let's create a new file and we will name this file as dashboard.js now let's create one functional component and we will name this component as dashboard because the file name is dashboard and then we need to write the arrow function and in this we will write a return statement and for now we will return a div from here and inside this div let's mention dashboard component and after this we need to export this component so we will write export statement and we will mention default and then dashboard and with this our basic dashboard component is ready now let's save this file and after this we need to create the route for this component so we will open app.js and in this component after the header tag we need to write a tag for the routes which is coming from a react router dom and now let's close this tag and inside this tag we need to create a route and this router is coming from a react router dom as well and in this router tag we need to use the property path and because we want to create a route for the dashboard component and its path will be slash and after the path we need to mention the element and we will mention the element as dashboard and after this let's close our route tag and our dashboard route is ready and after the dashboard component we need to create a component no match so if user types something in the url which is not present in our route so we can show a page of 404 not found and to do that we will right click on this pages folder and we will create a new folder and we will name this folder as no match and after this we will right click on this new match folder and we will create a new file and we will name this file as no match.js and after this we need to write a function and we will name this as no match and we will write arrow function and in the body we will write a return statement and here we will write h1 tag and in this h1 tag we will mention 404 not found and at the end we will write export statement 
and we will mention default and we will export no match and with this our no match component is ready now let's save this file and let's go back to our app.js because we need to create the route for this new no match component and for this we will duplicate our existing route for the dashboard and for the path we need to update it with static and after this we need to update the element property and instead of dashboard we will mention no match and with this our app.js is completed now let's save this file and let's run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors now let's go to the browser and you can see for by default route our dashboard component is working now let's update the route and let's write some random text and let's hit enter and as you can see it is showing 404 not found now let's click on this employees button and this should redirect us to the by default dashboard component and as you can see we got redirected back so in our vs code we will right click on our pages folder and we will create a new folder here and we will name this folder as employee and after this we will right click on this employee folder and we will create a new file and we will name this file as post user dot js and after this we need to create the css file so we will right click again on our employee folder and we will click on new file and we will name the new file as post user dot css after this let's open our post user dot js and here we need to import the css file so we will write import and we will mention the path of our post user dot css and after this let's create a function here and we will name this function as post user and this should be an arrow function and then we need to export it so we will write export default and then post user and after this we will write return statement and after this we need to create a form and after this we need to store the data of the form and we will create a use state for that and we will name this as form data and to set the values we will mention set form data and then let's mention use state here and here we need to mention the fields and the first field we want is the name and for by default value we will set empty and after the name we need to get the email so we will mention email here and after the email we need to mention the phone and the last field we want is the department and after this let's go to the return block and here we need to write a div tag and we will give a class name to this div which should be center form which will align our form in the center of the page and after this we will write one h1 tag and we will show post new employee and after this h1 tag we need to start our form tag and we will use the form from react bootstrap and in this form we need to mention the controls and first of all we will write the tag for the form group so we need to mention form dot group and after this we need to import the form as well so we will write import statement and we will import form from react bootstrap slash form and in this form group tag we need to mention the control id as well and we will give it as form basic name and after this we need to write a tag for the form control so we will mention form dot control and here we need to mention some properties and the first property we want is the type and we will set the type as text and after this we need to give a name and we will give it as name because from this form control we want to get the name of the employee and after this we need to mention the placeholder and we will give it as inter name after the placeholder we need to bind the value and we will mention here form data dot name and after this we need to mention the on change event and on this event we will call a method handle input change now let's write the code for this handle input change method and we will create a constant here and we will name this as handle input change and in the params we need to mention event and after this we will write arrow function and in the body first of all we need to get the form control name and the value so we will create a constant object and we will mention name and value in it and after this we will call event dot target and after this we will call set form data method and we will use spread operator and we will access the form data and then in the name we will set the value and with this our handle input change method is completed now let's go back to the html code and our control to get the name is completed now we will duplicate our form group and in the second control we need to get the email so in the type we will mention email and we need to update the name as well 
and we will mention email and in the placeholder we will mention enter email and after this we need to update the value and we will mention form data dot email and after this we will duplicate this form group again and this time we need to get the phone and in the type we will replace the email with text and we will name this as phone and in the placeholder we will mention enter phone and for the value we will update it to form data dot phone and after this we will duplicate this form group one last time and this time we need to get the department and in the name we will update it to department and for the placeholder we will mention enter department and for the value we will mention form data dot department and after this at the end we will write a button tag and we will show post employee and for the variant we will set it as primary and for the type we will set it as submit now we need to import this button so we will write import statement here and we need to import button from react bootstrap slash button and after this let's save our post user dot js and let's open our css file and i will paste the css code here you can pause the video and you can copy this code now let's save this file and after this we need to create a route for this post user component so we will open app.js file and here we will duplicate our dashboard route and for the path we need to set it as slash employee and for the element we need to update it as post user now let's save this app.js file and let's run our application And as you can see, our application is up without any errors. Now let's go to the browser and let's validate the functionality of our post user page. And here in the browser, let's click on this post employee button. And you can see we got redirected to post employee and we can see the post employee form group. Now let's write something in the name input and you can see it is working fine. So in our VS code, we need to open the employee folder and we will open post user.js. And in this file, first of all, we need to use on submit event of our form and we need to call a method. And to do that, we will go to the form tag and here we need to mention on submit. And here we need to give a method name. And for this case, we will give it as handle submit. And now we need to create this method. So we will write here constant and then we need to mention the name, which is handle submit. And this should be an asynchronous function. And in the params, we need to accept the event and we will name this event as E. And after this, we need to write arrow function. And in the body of this arrow function, first of all, we need to call a method to disable the reloading of the page because it will automatically reload the page. And to stop this, we can call e dot prevent default method. And after this, we can call our API. But for now, let's write one console log statement here and let's log our form data. Now let's save this file and let's run our application to verify the working of our handle submit method and form data. And as you can see, our application is up without any errors. Now let's go to the browser and in the browser, we will click on this post employee button. And now we will right click on this page and we will click on inspect to open the console. And from these tabs, we need to click on this console. Now let's enter some data in these inputs. And now let's click on this post employee button and we need to write the full email here. So we will write at the rate gmail.com. Now let's click again on this post employee button and you can see we got our form data printed in the console. And if you notice, we are getting two emails with the spelling mistake. So let's go back to our VS code and let's fix this issue. And in the form data, we need to fix the spellings of email. And now we can call our API. So after the console log statement, we will write try catch block. And in the try block, we can call the API and to call the API, we will use fetch and we will create a constant and we will name this as response. And here we need to use await keyword and then we will use fetch and here we need to give the url of our api which is http slash localhost colon 8080 and in our backend application as you can see we need to write slash api slash employ and we need to mention the same url here which is api slash employ and after this we need to mention other details so we will use curly braces to do that and we will remove the bracket from here and we will write it here and here, first of all, we need to mention the API call method, which is post in our case. And after the method, we need to write the headers. And in the headers, we need to set content type application slash JSON. And at the end, we need to send the form data and we will send this form data in the body. And before sending the form data, we need to stringify it. So we will call JSON dot stringify method. And here we will pass our form data. 
and with this the code to call the api is completed and now we need to write the code to get the response and for that we will create a constant variable and we will name this as data and we will set the value in it by calling the response and to do that we will use await keyword and we will call response dot json and after this let's write console log statement and for the message we will show employee created and then we will pass the data and after this we need to write the code to redirect the user to the dashboard so he can see all the employees there and to do that we will use use navigate from react router dom and we will create one constant here and we will name this as navigate and here we need to initialize the use navigate and we need to import it as well so we will write import statement and we need to import use navigate and then we will write from keyword and we need to import it from react router dom now let's go back to our api call and here we will call our navigate and for the url we will pass it as slash because the url of our dashboard component is slash and after this we need to write the code in the catch block and for now we will use console statement and we will log the message as error creating employee and then we will pass error dot message and with this the code to call the api is completed now let's save this file and you can see our application got compiled successfully now let's go to the browser and here we need to fill the details and for the name i will fill it as test and for the name i will add test at the rate gmail.com and then i will add phone number and department now let's click on this post employee button and as you can see we got one error related to the course and we need to fix this error from our backend application so let's go to the intellij and in the intellij we need to open employee controller and to fix the error related to the core we need to annotate this controller with at the rate cross origin annotation and for the url we will set it as static now let's rerun our application and as you can see our application is up now let's go to the browser and in the browser we will click post employee button again and as you can see we got the message employee created and we got redirected to our dashboard component and in mysql workbench we can verify the new entry with the id2 and we have the same email and name and phone number so in the spring boot application we will write a method in employee service first so we will open employee service and after post employee method we will start writing a new method and this new method will return list of employees and we can name this method as get all employees and in the body of this method we will call employee repository and because we are using jpa so we have some by default method which we can call to perform the basic operations and as you can see we have a find all method here which returns iterable and we can use this method to get the all employees so let's go back to employee service and here we will write a return statement and we will use employee repository and then we will call find all method which is a returning list of employees and with this our get all employees method is completed in the employee service now we need to write the endpoint to call this method so we will open employee controller and here after the post employee endpoint we will start writing a new one and this one will return list of employee and we can name this as get all employees and in the body of this method we will write a return statement and we will use employee service and we will call get all employees method and after this we will import this list class here and after this we need to annotate this method with at the rate get mapping annotation to make this a get api and for the url we will set it as slash employees and with this our get all employees api is completed now we will run this application and as you can see our application is up on port 8080 without any errors now let's go to the postman and let's call this get all employees api and in the postman from the request types we will select the get and after this we need to enter the url which is http localhost colon 8080 and after that we need to give the url of the api which will be slash api slash employees so let's write here slash api slash employees and after this we will click on this send button to call the api and as you can see we got the status 20 ok and we can see the employees in the response and here in our react application we need to open the dashboard folder and then we will open dashboard.js and in this file first of all we need to create a use state to store the employees so we will write constant and we will name this as employees and after this we will mention set employees and then we need to call use state 
and after this to call the api we will use use effect and here we need to write arrow function and after this we will pass dependency array so it can run only one time and in the body of this use effect we will write one constant and we will name this as fetch employees and after this we need to mention async because this is an asynchronous function and in the body of this function we will write try block and here we will create a constant and we will name this as response and we will use the await keyword and then we need to mention fetch and inside this we need to pass the url which is http localhost 8080 slash api slash employees and after this we will create another constant and we will name this as data and we will use await keyword and here we need to get the json from our response so we will call response dot json and after this we will call set employees and we will pass the data and after this we need to write the catch block and we will catch error in it and in the body of the catch block we will write console statement and we will call dot error method and we will show the message as error fetching employees and after this we will pass error dot message and that's it for our api call and at the end of the use effect we need to call our fetch employees function and after this we need to import the use effect so after the use state we will mention use effect and after this we need to write the html code so we will remove existing div tag and we will write a tag for the container and we will give it a class of empty dash five and after this we need to import this container from react bootstrap so we will write import statement and we will mention container from and here we need to mention react bootstrap slash container now let's go back to the html code and inside the container we need to write a tag for the row and inside the row we need to write a tag for the column and inside the column we will write one h1 tag and we will give it a class of text center and we will show the message as employees and after this we need to import the row and the column so we will go to the top and here we will write import statement and we will import row from react bootstrap slash row and after this we will duplicate this row statement and we will update it to column and after this to show the data we will use the table so let's write the import statement for table as well and we will import it from react bootstrap slash table now let's go back to the html code and after the h1 tag we will write a tag for the table and inside this table tag we will write a tag for table head and after this we will write a tag for the table row and in this table row we need to mention the table headings and first of all we need to show the name of the employee and after the name we will show the email and after the email we will show phone number and department and at the end we need a column for the actions and after this we will mention a tag for the table body and in the table body we will use our employees use state and we will call map method and for the single employee we will name it as employee and after this we will write arrow function and here we will write a tag for the table row and here we need to mention a property key and we will bind it with employee.id and after this we need to show the data and we will show the employee name first and we will use td tag for that and we will call employee.name and after the name we will show the email of the employee and after the email we will show phone number and department and at the end we will write a td tag for the actions and in this tag we will write two tags for the buttons and the first one is for the update and the second one is for the delete and after this we need to write the import statement for these buttons so we will go to the top and we will write import button from react bootstrap slash button and with this the code to show the employees data to the user is completed now we will save this file and we will run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors now let's go to the browser and let's validate the functionality of get all employees api and dashboard page and as you can see we got a table where we can see the data of the employees which includes name email phone number department and after this we are getting the two buttons for update and delete so we will create a method in the employee service first so we will open the class and after the get all employees method we will create a new method and this method will return void and we can name this method as delete employee and in the params we need to accept the id so we will mention long id and in the body of this method first of all we need to check the existence of the employee by the id so we will write if condition here and here we will use not and then we will use employee repository and we will call exist by id method 
and in the params we will pass the id and if it is true then we will write the throw statement and we will throw new entity not found exception and for the message we will send employee with the id not found and if it is not true then it means the employee is present in the db so we will use employee repository and we will call delete by id method and in the params we will pass id and with this our delete employee method is completed in the employee service now we need to create the endpoint so we will open employee controller and here we will write a new method and this method will return response entity and we can name this method as delete employee and after this we need to accept the employee id so we will mention at the rate path variable annotation to get it from the url and the data type will be long and we can name this as id and in the body of this method we need to write the try catch block and in the try block we will use employee service and we will call delete employee method and in the params we will pass id and after this we will write return statement and we will return new response entity and for the message we will send it as employee with the id deleted successfully and after this we need to return the status and we will return http status dot ok and after this we will write the catch block and we will catch entity not found exception and we will name this as e and in the block we will write return statement and we will return response entity and for the message we will get it from e dot get message and for the status we will send http status dot not found and after this we need to annotate this method with at the rate delete mapping annotation and for the url we will set it as slash employee slash id and with this our delete employee api is completed now let's run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors now let's go to the postman and let's test this delete employee api and in the postman from the types we need to select the delete and after this we will add basic url which is http localhost 8080 and after this we need to add the url of the api which is slash api slash employee and then we need to pass the id so we will write slash api slash employee slash one now before calling the api let's open the mysql workbench and let's see how many employees we have in the db and in the mysql workbench we will click on this icon to view the data of our employee table and as you can see for now we have two employees with the id one and two now let's go back to the postman and for the id i will send it as five now let's click on this send button and as you can see we got the status 404 not found and the message is employee with id5 not found because we don't have any employee with the id5 now let's update the id and let's mention 2 now the employee with the id2 should get deleted and we should get the response 200 ok so let's click on this send button and as you can see we got the status 200 ok and the message is employee with id2 deleted successfully now let's go back to the workbench and let's click on this icon to get the new data and you can see now we have only one employee with the id 1 so in the vs code we will create a new method to call the api so we will mention constant and we will name this as handle delete and this will be an asynchronous function so we will mention async keyword and in the params we need to accept employee id and after this we will write arrow function and in the body of this function we will write try catch block and in the try block we will create constant variable and we will name this as response and here we will use await keyword and we will use fetch method and to give the url we will use backticks because we want to pass the employee id inside this and we need to mention our basic url which is http localhost 8080 so let's paste it here and after this we need to give the api url which is slash api slash employee slash id so after 8080 slash we will mention api slash employee and after the employee we need to pass the employee id so we will use dollar and then curly braces to pass the variable and here we will mention employee id and after the url we will write curly braces and here we need to mention the method and because this is a delete api so we will mention delete in the method and after this let's write one console log statement and we will show the message employee with id and here we will inject the employee id variable and then we will show delete it successfully and after this we will go to the catch block and inside this block we will use console.error 
and we will show error deleting employee and then we will pass error dot message and with this the code to call the delete api is completed now we need to call this handle delete method on the click of the delete button so we will go to the html code and here in the delete button tag we will mention on click event and on the click we will call a method which is handle delete and in the params we need to pass the employee id which we can get by calling employee dot id now let's save this file and let's run our application and as you can see our application is up but we can see one warning related to the response variable because it is not used yet and we will handle this after some time so let's go to the browser now and let's validate the functionality of delete api and on the dashboard of our application we can see the employees now let me create a new employee so i will click on this post employee button and after adding the details of the employee i will click on this post employee button and as you can see now we have two employees in our application now let's right click on the page and let's click on inspect and after this let's click on the console tab and after this let's click on the delete button of our employee 2 and as you can see we got the message employee with id 4 deleted successfully but as you can see the data on this page haven't got updated but our delete api is working fine and when we refresh our page you will see the updated data now let's go back to our react application and let's write the code to automatically update the data after the delete api so in the handle delete method after the response we will write one if condition and in this if condition we will check if response dot ok so if we got the ok response from our api call then we need to update the data and we will call set employees method here and in the params of this method we need to send the previous state of our employees use state and to do that we will mention previous employees and then we will write arrow function and in the body we will use previous employees and we will call filter method and we will name the single employee as employee and after this we need to write the arrow function and here we need to compare the id of the employee with the id which we got in the params so we will write employee dot id and here we will use not equal to sign and we will mention employee id and with this the code to update the page data is completed now let's save this file and as you can see our application got compiled successfully now let's go to the browser and here let's click on this post employee button and let's add one employee and after adding the details let's click on this post employee button and as you can see we got two employees now let's say we want to delete the employee one so we will click on this delete button and as you can see we got the message and our page data got updated as well so in our spring boot application we will open employee service and here we will create a new method and this method will return employee and we can name this method as get employee by id and after this in the params we need to accept the id so we will mention long and we will name this as id and in the body of this method we will write return statement and we will use our employee repository and here we will use existing jpa method which is find by id and it will return one optional employee and in the params we need to pass the id and because this method is returning optional employee so it can be null so to handle that null we will use or else and in this case we will return null from this method and with this our get employee method is completed in the employee service now let's open the employee controller and let's write the endpoint here and at the end of the file we will start writing the method and this method will return response entity and we can name this method as get employee by id and after this we need to get the employee id from the url and to do that we will mention at the rate path variable annotation and the data type of this will be long and we can name this as id and in the body of this method we will create the object of employee and we will name this as employee and after this we will use employee service and we will call get employee by id method and in the params we will pass id and after this we need to check this employee and if this employee is null then we will return not found in the response otherwise we will return employee with the status of 200 ok and to do that we will write one if condition and here we will check our employee if it is equal to null and in this case we will write return statement and we will return response entity dot not found and after this we will build it and in the else case we will write return statement and we will use response entity dot ok and in the body we will send employee and at the end we will annotate this method with at the rate get mapping annotation 
and for the URL we will set it as slash employee slash ID and the ID is the variable here. So that's why we wrapped it around the curly braces. And with this our get employee by ID API is completed. Now let's rerun our application. And as you can see our application is up without any errors. Now let's go to the postman and let's validate the functionality of get employee by ID API. And in the postman from the types we need to select the get type. And after this we will write the basic URL which is HTTP localhost 8080 slash API. And after this we need to write the API URL which is employee slash ID. Now before calling the API let's go to the workbench and let's see what data we have in the employee table. And in the MySQL workbench let's click on this icon to view the data of the employee. And as you can see we have one record with the ID 5. Now let's go back to the postman and for the ID we will send it as 5. And after this let's click on this send button. And as you can see we got the employee with the ID 5. Now let's go to the URL and let's change it to 50 and we should get not found from our Spring Boot application. So let's click on this send button and as you can see we got 404 not found in the response. So first of all we need to create the update user component and to do that we will right click on the employee folder and we will create a new file and we will name this file as update user dot js and after this we need to create the css file so we will right click again on the employees folder and we will create a new file and we will name this file as update user dot css and after this let's open our update user dot js file and let's write the constant keyword and the function name will be update user and this will be an arrow function and in this let's write a return statement and let's return a div tag and in this div let's write update user is working and at the end we need to export this component so we will write export statement here and we will mention default keyword and we need to export update user and after this we need to import the update user css so we will write import statement here and here we need to give the path which is dot forward slash update user dot css and that's it for now in this update user file let's save this file and now we need to create a route for this update user component and to do that we will open app.js and here we need to duplicate this employee route and let's paste it here and for the path after slash employee we will mention slash colon id and the id is the variable here which we need to send and after this we need to update the element and here we will mention update user and that's it for the app.js let's save this file and now we need to open our dashboard.js file and here on the click of update button we need to redirect the user to our new update user page and to do that we need use navigate hook so let's go to the top and let's initialize that hook and we will write here constant and we will name this as navigate and after this we need to set use navigate from react route DOM. And after this to redirect the user we will write a new method and we will write the constant keyword here and we will name the method as handle update and in the params we need to accept the id and after this we will write arrow function and in the body of this method we will use navigate and here we need to give the url with the employee id so we will write the backticks and the url is slash employee and after slash we will use dollar and curly braces to pass the variable which is employee id and our handle update method is completed now we need to call this method so we will go to the html code and here we need to use on click event of our update button and we will write the arrow function and we will call handle update and after this in the params we need to pass the employee id which we can get by calling employee.id and with this the code to redirect the user to update component is completed now we will save this file and we will run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors now let's go to the browser and let's see if the redirection to the update component is working or not and as you can see on the dashboard we can see a table of the employees now let's click on this update button and as you can see we got redirected to the update user component and we can see the id of the employee in the url now let's go back to the react application and let's write the code to call the api and show a form here and here in the vs code let's open post user.js file and from here let's copy this form data use state and handle input change method and let's go to the update user.js file and let's paste them here and after this we need to import the use state from the react so we will write import statement and we will import use state from the react and after this we need to copy the html code from the post user.js so let's open the file and let's go to the html section and let's copy this html after this let's come back to update user.js and here we will paste the copied html 
and after this we need to import the button and form so let's go to the top and let's write the import statement and we will import the button first and after this we need to import the form and we will mention form from react bootstrap and after this let's go to the html and here we need to replace the post new employee with edit employee and after this let's remove this on submit event and rest of the code will be the same where we have form group and form control to get the name and after this on the change we are calling handle input change method and after this we have input for the email for the phone number and for the department and for the button text we will update it to edit employee and after this we need to copy the css code as well so we will open postuser.css and here we will copy the code and we will paste it in update user.css now let's save this file and let's go back to update user.js and here we need to get the id from the params and to do that we will write a constant variable and we will name this as id and we will set the value by calling use param from react router dom and now as we have the id of the employee so we can call our backend api and to call the backend api we will use use effect and we will write arrow function and here we need to pass the id so inside this array we will mention the id and after this we need to import this use effect from the react so let's mention it here and now we can call our backend api and we will write a constant here and we will name this method as fetch employee and this will be an asynchronous function and after this we will write an arrow function and in the body we will write try catch block and in the try block we will create a constant variable and we will name this as response and we will mention await keyword and we will use fetch to call the api and after this we will mention backticks and we will write the basic url which is http localhost colon 8080 and after this we need to mention the api method url which is api slash employee and after slash we need to pass the employee id so we will use dollar and curly braces and we will pass id and after this we need to get the json from this response so we will create a constant variable and we will name this as data and here we need to use the await keyword and we will use response and we will call dot json method and now we need to set this data inside this form data so we will use set form data method and we will pass the data and in the cache block we will use console dot error and we will show error fetching user and then we need to pass the error dot message and after this we need to call this fetch employee method and we can do this here and with this our api call is completed now let's save this file and as you can see our application got compiled now let's go to the browser and let's validate the functionality of our api call and from the dashboard let's click on this update button and as you can see on the update employee page we got the form and after the api call we can see the data in the inputs as well now let's go to the post employee page and let's create another employee and after adding the details let's click on this post employee button and you can see the employee got created now let's click on the update button of employee 4 and you can see we got redirected again and we can see the details of the employee 4 in the form so we will create the update employee method in the employee service first so let's open the class and after the get employee by id method we will start writing a new method and this method will return employee and we will name this method as update employee and after this in the params we need to accept the id and employee so we will mention long id and after this we will mention employee and we will name this as employee and in the body of this method first of all we need to get the employee by the id from the db so we will create one optional variable of employee and we will name this as optional employee and after this we will use employee repository and we will call find by id method and in the params we will pass the employee id and after this we need to check the existence of our optional employee so we will write if condition and here we will use optional employee and we will call is present method and if it is not true then we will write a return statement and we will return null from this method and in the block of if condition we will create a new employee object and we will name this as existing employee and we will set the value in it by calling optional employee dot get method and after this in this existing employee we need to update the data and first of all we will update the email so we will call existing employee dot set email method and in the params we need to pass the updated email which we can get by calling employee dot get email and as you know this employee is coming from the parameters and after the email we need to set the name so we will call existing employee dot set name method and in the params we will pass employee dot get name and after the name we need to set the phone so we will call existing employee dot set phone method and in this we will send employee dot get phone and after the phone we will set the department so we will call existing employee dot set department method and in this we will pass employee dot get department 
and after setting the data in the existing employee we need to save it in the db so we will write a return statement here and we will use employee repository and we will call save method and in the params we will pass existing employee and with this our update employee method is completed in the employee service now let's open the employee controller to write the endpoint and after the get employee by id method we will start a new method and this method will return response entity and we can name this method as update employee and in the params we need to accept the id and the employee so we will mention at the rate path variable annotation because we will get the id from the path and the data type of this will be long and we will name this as id and after this we need to mention the employee which we will get in the request body so we will mention at the rate request body annotation and after this we need to mention employee and we will name this as employee and in the body of this method we will create a new object of employee and we will name this as updated employee and after this we will use employee service and we will call update employee method and in the params we will pass id and employee and after this we need to check our updated employee and we need to return the response and to do that we will write if condition and in this we will use updated employee and we will check it with null and if it is true then we will write a return statement and we will return response entity and to set the status we will call status method and here we will return http status dot bad request and after this we will call build method and if our updated employee is not true then in the else case we will write a return statement and we will return response entity dot ok and in the body we will send updated employee and after this we will mention at the rate patch mapping annotation on this method and for the url we will set it as slash employee slash id and with this our update employee api is completed now let's run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors now let's go to the postman and let's call this update employee api from there and in the postman from the request types we need to select patch and after this we need to give the basic url which is http localhost 8080 and after this we need to mention the endpoint url which is slash api slash employee and after this we need to pass the id which we can give as six and after this we need to open the body tab and in this we will select raw and then json and in the request body first of all we need to pass the name so let's mention here the name and after the name we will pass email and after email we will pass phone number and at the end we will pass department now i will fill the data in these fields now in the mysql workbench let's open our employee table and as you can see currently we have two employees and let's say we want to update the name of the employee 4 which has id 6 and in the postman as you can see i gave the id 6 and after this in the request body i use the same details for department phone number and email but i change the name to update name now let's click on this send button and as you can see we got the response 200 ok and in the updated employee we have the name got updated now let's go to the workbench and let's verify the change and in the workbench let's click on this icon to refresh the data and as you can see now for the id 6 we have the name as update name now let's go back to the postman and in the postman let's give the employee id as 66 which is not available in the db and let's click on this send button and as you can see we got an error response which is 400 bad request so our update employee api is working completely fine so in our react application we need to open update user.js and here we will create a new method to call our api and we will write const and we will name this method as handle submit and this will be an asynchronous method and in the params we will accept e and after this we will write an arrow function and in the body of this method first of all we need to prevent the default behavior of the event so it should not reload our page and we can do this by calling e dot prevent default behavior and after this we will write try catch block and in the try block we will create a constant and we will name this as response and after this we will mention await keyword and we will use fetch to call the api and in this we need to pass the url so we can copy the url from here and we will paste it here and the url for the update api is basically the same as the fetch employee api which is localhost 8080 slash api slash employee and after this we are passing the employee id which we are getting from the params and after this we need to mention the other details which includes the method and we need to use the method as patch and after the method we need to set the headers and in the headers we will set content type application slash json and after the headers we need to send the body and before sending the employee we need to stringify it so we will use json dot stringify method and here we will pass our form data which have the details of the employee 
and with this our api call is completed now we need to get the data from the response so we will create a constant and we will name this as data and here we will use await keyword and we will use our response and we will call json method and after this let's use console.log and in this let's show the message updated user and after this we will send the data and after getting the data we need to redirect the user to our dashboard page and to do that we need use navigate so let's go to the top and here let's create the object and we will mention const and we will name this as navigate and after this we need to mention use navigate from the react router dom now let's go back to our try block and at the end of the try block we will use the same navigate and for the url we need to pass slash because the url of our dashboard is slash and after this we will go to the catch block and here we will use console dot error and we will show the message as error updating user and after this we need to send the error which we can get by calling error dot message and with this our handle submit method is completed now we need to write the code to call this method on the submit event of the form so let's go to the html section and in the form tag we need to use on submit event and here we need to mention handle submit and with this the code for the update user component is completed now we will save this file now we will run our application and as you can see our application is up without any errors now let's go to the browser and let's validate the update user functionality and on the dashboard of our application we can see the employees table and let's say we want to update the name of the employee 4 so we will click on this update button and here in the name input we will set it to employee 4 now let's click on this edit employee button and as you can see we got redirected to our dashboard and we can see the updated name which is employee 4 now and now let's click on the update button of our employee 3 and here in the input of the name let's write update and let's click on this edit employee button and as you can see we got redirected to the dashboard and the name of employee 3 got updated to employee 3 update and that's it for this video if you have any questions you can comment them down below